So, so these are the equations uh, so, so let us pick up from where we left off uh, in the previous lecture. So, we are looking at this PGZ decoder for reed solomon codes. So, it is similar to the BCH decoder we are going to think of vectors as polynomials, but the difference is these polynomials now have coefficients from g f 2 power m. Okay. So, it is not uh, binary it is uh, it is going to be Galois field again. So, you have a slightly more complicated problem, but other than that uh, in philosophy it is very it is a very similar looking equation. Okay. So, if you assume you are looking for w errors okay, then the error vector error polynomial e of x can be written in this form. Okay. So, coefficients y 1 through y w and exponents i 1 through i w and you have y 1 x power i 1 plus y 2 x power i 2 and so on. Okay. So, so, so once again we will do the similar substitution to before what was the what was the substitution we are going to say uh, x 1 equals x power oh no I am sorry I am sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let, let me not do this let me write down the equation in terms of e of alpha and etcetera and then we will do the substitution. Okay. So, basically the equation we have we have two t equations right and how many variables well it is not w. So, y is there okay, 2 w variables right. So, what is the that is the idea. So, so let us see okay. So, so how do these uh, how do these variables look is, is important s 1 is going to be e of alpha which is y 1 alpha power i 1 plus y 2 alpha power i 2 plus so on till y w alpha power i w s 2 is e of alpha squared this is y 1 alpha power 2 i 1 y 2 alpha power 2 y 2 y w alpha power 2 y w all the way down to s 2 t which is e evaluated at alpha power 2 t y 2 alpha power 2 t i 2 so on till y w alpha power 2 t i w. Okay. So, so these are the, the equations very similar to before we have uh, we have alpha power i 1 and then the additional term is the y 1 the constants appearing in front. Okay. If it is bch you would not have that. So, we do the same substitution as before we let x 1 being x 1 to be alpha power i 1 x 2 to be alpha power i 2. So, on till x w to be alpha power i w. Okay. So, I have pulled a bit of a stunt here and I have introduced a new variable without telling you what that variable is and we do not know ahead of time what that is I have just put that in nobody asked me that question. So, I have not I did not I was not reminded to do that. So, what is that extra variable that I have introduced which I do not know w right. So, it is crucial okay. So, w I do not know also okay. So, I have just introduced it, but let us not worry about it we can fix w later okay. So, w can be at most t okay. So, t is a small number. So, we are not too scared about it. So, so we, we will we will worry about that later. So, once you do it these equations become s 1 equals y 1 x 1 plus y 2 x 2 plus so on till y w x w s 2 equals y 1 x 1 square plus y 2 x 2 square plus so on till y w x w square all the way down to s 2 t which is y 1 x 1 power 2 t y 2 x 2 power 2 t. So, on till y w x w power 
2 t ok. You know many of you attempted to say omega it looks very much like omega right. It is not omega it is w right. being electrical engineers we have a special affiliation to omega ok. So, these are the these are the equations and uh, some looking at the BCH example ok being motivated by the BCH example we are going to make some substitutions and transform it into a simpler set of equations and finally, try and solve it that is what so and get one get one equation whose roots will give me the solution that is the idea behind uh, all these things. But before I go into that I want I want to give you a brief glimpse as why this solution is very very complicated ok in the BCH case the equation looked very simple and the solution anyway we are doing an exhaustive search ok. Why is not an exhaustive search very easy in this case ok. Yeah, see if you try the number of exhaustive searches you have to do is just becomes too many number of trials you have to make is too many because you have x 1 through x w which are w positions out of n possibility. So, n choose w is going to be a large number ok. So, we are thinking of n being in the range of 2000 etcetera ok thousands ok and even if w is 20 2000 choose 20 is how big very big right. So, there are some simple bounds you can do by n by k par k etcetera ok. So, you can do some bounds and evaluate what that is it is a very large number ok 2000 choose 20 is a really really large number you have too many possibilities. So, you cannot try everything out ok. So, ultimately we will get one equation for which you can do an exhaustive search because that is only one type of search and this not too many you have to do ok. So, here we have so many equations and it is just it is mind boggling to even try and solve it ok. So, it is too many cases. So, you have to do a series of substitutions and make it smart do it smartly. So, that you get a simpler solution simpler equation for which you can maybe do an exhaustive search ok. So, so that is what we will do and there is a there is a there is a trick trick to this and uh, it is it is there is no way to easily motivate that trick ok. So, I am going to simply give you that uh, give you that trick and then we will see we will see if you have some interesting ways of motivating it. So, far I have not found a very very smart way of motivating it I have only some slightly smarter ways. So, maybe you will find something very interesting ok. So, you start off first by defining a syndrome polynomial ok. So, let us say is s of x. There are various ways of describing it and in fact, in books there will be uh, several different ways. The, the method that I am following here is uh, is closely followed by the book by Richard Blahood ok ok. So, I am basically following his method ok. There are various other ways of describing this ok. It is it is also a very old algorithm. So, this trick has been around for quite a while now ok. So, you first start by defining a syndrome polynomial which I believe is s 1 x plus s 2 x squared plus so on till s 2 t x power 2 t ok. Let me just make sure that I have <coughs> that I have it correctly done. All right. So, this is the syndrome polynomial ok. So, you should wonder what is this small x ok. So, the small x is some x ok it is it's not it is not very easy to figure out what it means and uh, you will finally, see that that has that has a very nice interpretation finally ok. So, let us let us look at this polynomial a little bit more closely ok. So, s of x remember it is go back and it is s 1 x plus s 2 x squared plus so on right. So, I am sorry. So, you are saying should I start with 0 or yeah. 1 I am going to start with 1 s 1 x is fine <laughs> correct that is what I checked also. 
<laughs> okay java has some problem i think no something restarted okay okay so this is correct so so what happens to s of x if you look at it a little bit differently is you get y1 x1 x okay plus i'll write the next term here y1 x1 squared x squared okay so in fact the first term will be what y2 2 x plus so on till y w x w x okay then x 1 squared plus y 2 x 2 squared x squared so on till y w x w x squared x squared all the way down to plus y 1 x 1 power 2 t power 2 t y 2 x 2 power 2 t x power 2 t y w x w power 2 t x power 2 t. Okay, remember all these things are being added okay, so right, that is the definition of s of x. Is that okay? All right. So, so ultimately the goal is we want to get rid of all these non-linear equations and go to linear equations, right? Because the only thing we can really solve is linear equations. Okay, so that's the basic idea behind the whole simplification. So you're looking at this complicated non-linear type of equation, and we want to get linear equations out of it. Is there a change of variables? Can we change things around so that we can get nice linear equations which we can solve? That's the idea. Okay. So to do that, you make this observation. So if I take s of x and multiply by 1 plus x 1 x okay so i have written down the s of x it's in this form i'm going to multiply it with 1 plus x 1 x okay so the reason why i'm doing it is if you look down this column if you look down this column when the computer decides to show it to you if you if you look down this column why? You notice you have some kind of a geometric progression. Y one comes out, okay. Then you have a geometric progression with the ratio being x one x, okay. So eventually it's going to come to something like one by one plus x one x, okay. So something like that, okay, right? Of course there are some ambiguities in the way I'm describing it, but it's eventually going to do that. So when I do multiply by one plus x one x, I expect lot of cancellation. That's the idea. When I multiply by s of x into one plus x one x, I expect a lot of cancellation in this column. In the other columns, it won't be any cancellation, but in this column, I expect a lot of cancellation. Okay, so if I do that, let me write down only the first column. Now. Okay, I'll forget about the other columns. What will happen? In the first column, you will get y1 x1 squared, x1 x, I am sorry, what did I write? y1 x1 x plus y1 x1 power 2 t plus 1, x power 2 t plus 1. All other terms will get, will get cancelled out because of the way I am multiplying out. This is only in the first column. What will happen in the other columns? You will have yeah. everything. Yeah. Can't do it. All the, all the things will be there. Okay, is that right? So, so and then the other columns will have all terms. Okay. Now, if I do the same trick with say the second column, if I multiply with one plus x two x, what will happen? First column will have all kinds of stuff, and then the second column will have what? Y two x two x. And then y2 x2 power 2t plus 1 x power 2t plus 1, and then plus all kinds of stuff in the other columns. Okay. Okay. All right. So if I keep multiplying by 1 plus x1 x, I am causing a lot of cancellation in each column. So what will happen 
what will happen if I do this? What will happen if I take s of x and multiply by 1 plus x 1 x times 1 plus x 2 x so on till 1 plus x w x. What will happen? I am sorry? You will have for each of them, but then multiplied by the rest of the. So, let me write that down. So, you will have y 1 times x 1 x plus x 1 2 t plus 1 x power 2 t plus 1 multiplied by 1 plus One plus x two x, so on till one plus x w x, and then what will happen to the second column? Y two x two x plus x two power two t plus one. Anyway, I mean the first time I read about this cancellation, I was really excited. I don't know if you guys are really excited or not, but it is it is very interesting stuff, you know. It's not. Uh, it's not one of those things you see in circuit theory, for example. Okay, so <laughs> so you get this. Okay, likewise, each column will have some term like that, and then if you want, I can write the last last thing once again. Here I would get one plus x one x. So, on till 1 plus x w minus 1 x. Okay. Who has beards is scratching their beards? Yes, no? Thinking more deeply about the problem. Okay, so, have I accomplished anything is the question other than doing some <laughs> basic simple algebra. Okay. Has anything been accomplished? Is, do you observe anything on the right hand side? There are several powers of x that show up in the right hand side. I am actually interested in powers of x that do not show up on the right hand side. What powers of x are not there on the right hand side? Of course, constant is not there, but constant is not there on the left hand side also. 2 t from where? W plus 1 to 2 t, right. There is no term, okay. So, on the RHS, there are some terms that do not appear x power w plus 1 x power w plus 2, so on till x power 2 t do not appear. So, that is great, seems like that is a positive step. Do they appear on the left hand side? Yeah, they do appear. Okay. So, you could equate them to 0 and that will give you slightly different kind of equations, but the question is do they give you linear equations, okay. See I know s of x, I know all the coefficients of s of x, but on the right hand side and the multiplying s of x, I have a series of terms, how can I, how can I get linear equations. Okay. It is a very simple trick actually, it is not too difficult, it is not even a trick. So, what you do is you define a polynomial which I will call lambda of x to be equal to this guy 1 plus x 1 x, 1 plus x 2 x, 1 plus oh my god, this is just really I should probably restart or something 1 plus x w x okay i don't know what these coefficients are but let's say when i multiply them out 
and add it all up I will finally get some polynomial of degree what of degree w okay and those polynomials will have some coefficients for instance the first coefficient will be 1 I know that for sure okay and then what else the next coefficient maybe it is lambda 1 x I do not know what it is but it might be some lambda 1 x and then lambda 2 x square plus so on till lambda w x power w. Okay. Now, what do I know? S of x, if I multiply by lambda of x, what is going to happen? When I multiply S of x by lambda of x, what is going to happen? A lot of things will happen, but what cannot happen on the right hand side? I cannot have any coefficient with powers w plus 1 to 2t. So, this will give you some polynomial okay, but it will be such that okay, what is this polynomial if you write it down it is s 1 x plus s 2 x square plus so on till s 2 t x power 2 t times 1 plus lambda 1 x plus lambda 2 x square so on till lambda w x power w okay i know the ss okay s1 through s2t i know i don't know the lambdas lambda 1 through lambda w i don't know but what will happen when i multiply these two polynomials yeah so coefficients of coefficients of x power w plus 1, x power w plus 2, so on till okay, display driver is going to die. x power 2 t equals what? 0. Now, will this give me linear equations? give me linear equations in the lambdas okay so i can solve for the lambdas then how do i go from lambda to the axis how do i do i have to find the roots of lambda of x okay so that's where my exhaustive search will come in okay so how do how are x xi's related to the lambda i's you make a polynomial with the lambda i's, find its roots, x i's will be the inverse of the roots. Okay. So, that is the simple relationship that you can see here. I will talk more about it as we go along, but anyway, so that is the idea. So, what I am pointing out is you can from the x, x 1, x 2, x omega, you can find lambda of x, that is a very easy operation. What I am trying to say is from lambda of x also, you can find the x 1, x 2, x omega. How do you do that? You find the roots of lambda of x then take the inverse of those things and those will be the roots okay, you can do an exhaustive search to find the roots okay so this is the this is the basic principle of the decoder so you have to get out these linear equations write them out solve them you get a polynomial you solve those polynomial as in you find the roots of that polynomial you get the in invert them you get the excess which tell you where the errors have occurred the basic idea. So, these x i's have a name this x 1 through x omega they are called error locators. Why are they called error locators? Remember each of these x i's is basically alpha power I mean x j is alpha power i j. Okay. So, this tells you the location of error. So, this is the method this uh, slide so to speak captures the method for finding the error locators ok. 
Okay, so you find first the syndrome polynomial, which is a very easy thing to find. Then you define another polynomial with these lambdas. That polynomial should be such that when you multiply with s of x, you should not get any coefficients. When I mean, coefficient for the powers w plus one through two t should be zero. Okay, so once you do that, you can you can solve for the error location. So that's the idea. Okay. So, you can now go through and list out the coefficients of w plus 1. You will see you will get linear equations. So, I am going to write that down explicitly in the next slide. If you do x power w plus 1, you will get the following. Okay. This is what you will get for x power w plus 1. You can go back and check this, it is not uh, too difficult. For w plus 2, you will get Okay. So, all the way down to I will write x power 2 w okay, and we will assume w is less than or equal to t. I will write x power 2 w will be s 2 w plus s 2 w minus 1 lambda 1 plus s 2 w minus 2 lambda 2 plus all the way to s w lambda w equal to 0. Okay, so you can also write this in terms of a matrix, which will look like this S one, S W plus one, S W all the way down to S two. This way you go all the way up to S two W minus one. S two W minus two all the way down to S W multiply this with Lambda one, Lambda two down to Lambda W, you should get S W plus one, S W plus two all the way down to S 2 W. Okay. So, I will call this matrix as let us say some M of W. Hmm? It is I do not know if it is toplets or anything, I do not think it is anything. Okay. So, if you have let us say determinant of m of w being non 0, then what does it mean? You have a unique solution, you get a unique answer. Okay. The moment the determinant is 0, then something is wrong. Okay. So, you have gotten into one of those indeterminate situations with the bounded distance decoding. Okay, so, that is what it means, but there is an interpretation for determinant being 0. So, I want to I want to talk about that a little bit. So, you remember one of the things we could not do was find w, right. We did not know w ahead of time, right and this method strongly uses w, right. So, you equate the coefficients from w plus 1. So, it uses w a lot. So, the way to get around that is to use this property of m of w. What you can show, which I will not prove here, you can look it up in the books. What you can show is m of mu okay okay for some mu let's say mu equals w w plus 1 all the way till t okay so what is m of mu if i say you, know, you can go back and 
instead of w you put mu right so okay instead of w here you put mu okay so that's that's the I'm using I'm using a notation here so what i mean is so suppose say let's say w is the actual number of errors okay suppose in your channel the number of in the actual realization the actual number of errors that happened is w okay and you don't know w but w is the number of errors that actually happened now i'm going to look at this matrix m of mu and i will let mu be i don't know w so i'll say what i'll say how how to find w using this method okay m of mu it turns out for all these mu's it is singular okay what do i mean by singular determinant is 0 okay so determinant equals 0 okay m of w on the other hand is guaranteed to be non single okay oh sorry w plus 1 I'm sorry I had a different way of writing this sorry <laughs> obviously otherwise this is not a good decoder okay. so m of w if w is the actual number of errors then m of w is guaranteed to be non singular so this 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 equation will have a unique solution okay it has to right in a way if w errors actually occurred and you guess w correctly you should get one unique answer there should be no problem with that okay and w is less than t remember so you'll definitely get one unique answer there's no problem on the other hand if you guessed wrongly but you guessed in the right direction as in you guess something larger than the actual w then m of mu is guaranteed to be singular so how do i find w using this property you start from t that's all that's the idea if you know w is less than or equal to t you start from t and find m of t okay and see if it's singular or not if it is singular then number of errors that appeared is actually lesser so you go to t minus 1 t minus 2 etc till you get to the first place where it becomes non singular when it becomes non singular you invert the matrix multiply by the other guy and you get your polynomial lambda of x is that okay so this is the complete pgz decoder okay so at least in from a high level you know how to do pgz decoding bounded distance decoding right you find these matrices come to a point where it's non singular and then solve for that particular weight you get your error locator polynomial does it solve all the problems no there is still something more to be done i'll come to it later it's soon enough for now at least you know what to do okay all right so using this we can now find lambda of x okay this lambda of x by the way is called the error locator polynomial okay okay so lambda of x can be found so let's say it can be found so once you find it what should you do what's the next step in the pgz decoder find roots of lambda of x in g of 2 power m that is important in this field not in any other field okay you find roots of lambda of x in g of 2 power m okay what should happen is you should get w distinct roots non zero roots it is very important okay if you get w distinct non zero roots you proceed otherwise you just declare something is wrong okay which means otherwise if something else happens then your bounded distance decoding assumption has been violated somewhere okay something else has happened lot of errors have happened that you transmitted from somewhere and somehow you got pushed into some other situation and you are thinking something else. something has gone wrong okay so you can detect an error has happened okay so if 
there are W distinct non zero roots proceed. Okay, only then this thing is true. Okay, only then this is true. Okay. Okay. Else then something crazy has gone gone on, some weird situation has happened and somehow so by some luck I found the lambda of x when it can happen right this procedure is totally meaningless when there are more than t errors anything can happen okay you might get some some lambda of x which is valid and all that but then when you do the roots you see it's not actually valid okay so it's not true okay yeah yeah you might get even get those things you might even get repeated roots for instance you should get that's why i said w distinct non zero root you could get repeated roots anything like that happens then something has gone wrong some some the bounded distance assumption has been violated so you've gone somewhere okay so if there are w distinct non zero roots you proceed to the next step what is the next step it can also happen yes so in fact uh, some as in what do you, what do you mean the and then get your answer what what do you say Get double distinct roots, it means that there are only that yeah. many errors. No, no. Because even some other. No, no, no. Even that you can't be very sure. Can't be sure. Can't be very sure. If uh, if you get W distinct roots, that could have been less than, than T. Errors, yeah. That you can say that. Otherwise, some from some other code word, you can come all the way here. But you will correct to the code word within your boundary. So that way, it's okay. So you will go to go back to the unique code word within your sphere of radius t around your r of x that is my definition of the problem i am not worried about which code word was actually transmitted I mean, don't don't uh, don't get into that i'm just doing bounded distance decoding i'm going to look within t and say if i find one thing i'm going back so if if, if you find w distinct roots then it means that there's only one thing that's that's for sure there's only one code word in your sphere of radius t that is true okay so battery is low I have 10 minutes, 5 percent battery. All right, so we'll just stop whenever it decides to give up. Okay. All right, so the next step is if you if you had W distinct roots, you set x1, x2, xw to be what? The inverse of the roots. Okay, so this is important. You're setting it to be the inverse of the roots. Okay, not the roots themselves. 1 plus x1 x so if you find a root then it is xi inverse okay inverse of the roots biology because okay so remember lambda of x has degree equal to w and we found w distinct roots and you set the error locations inverse of roots Okay, so we are not yet done because we haven't yet found the error polynomial exactly. We have found the locations of the errors. What have we not found? The yi's. Okay, the the yi's are now called error magnitudes. Okay, the yi's these are called the error magnitudes. Okay, but once the error locations are known. The error magnitude is simply a, it's simply a linear equation. Okay, so what you do is, you look at, uh, you look at s1 equals y1 x1 plus y2 x2, so on till yw xw. You take s2, which is again y1 x1 square plus y2 x2 square. W x w square, all the way down to s w. You can stop at s w. Okay, how do I know that this matrix is invertible? This is a proper linear equation. It'll give me a unique solution. Yeah, you will get a Vandermonde structure for your matrix here. If you write a matrix here and then multiply by y one through y w, you will get a Vandermonde matrix. And I know x i's are distinct. Okay, so clearly that will have a non-zero determinant. 
or I can invert it and get my yi's without any problem. Okay. So, you find solve these equations. Okay. So, so let us uh, summarize in the next 5 minutes or so, we will summarize the Reed Solomon decoder. Okay. So, it is a complicated kind of uh, decoding, you have you have an R of x, the first step is what? Is to compute S i to be R of alpha power i, i going from 1 to 2 t. Okay, so, this is basically fine syndromes. Okay. So, at the output of this, you will have the SIs, then what should you do? Find W such that M of W plus 1 is singular and m of w is non singular okay and uh, so w is obviously less than or equal to t so yeah so so w plus 1 Maybe it's uh, yeah, it's okay. So for t, it's a bit vague. So for t, you don't do this. Okay, so if you get m of t to be non-singular, you just say that t errors have happened. And then for others, you have to do this. What is this m of w? M of w is basically this matrix S uh, w S w minus one all the way to S one. W plus 1 all the way to S2 W minus 1, S2 W minus 2 all the way to S2. Okay. So, this is the matrix. You form these matrices, determine W for which it is non singular, and W plus 1 should be singular. Okay. If W is strictly less, if W is equal to T, then that is okay. So, you find the W, and then what do you do? What is the next step? Yeah, so you have to find find lambda of x. So how do you find lambda of x? Which is 1 plus lambda 1 x so on till lambda w x for w. How do you find these guys? Uh, you have to do this equation, right? So lambda 1 lambda w equals m of w inverse times s w plus 1 all the way down to s 2 w. Okay, maybe this box can be a little bit bigger. Okay, so, you find your uh, error locator. So, this is basically this is some step. This in this step, you're finding the error locator polynomial. Okay. What is the next step? You have to find the actual error locations. You find roots of lambda of x. If there exists W distinct roots, of course, all of these things are in G of 2 to the m. Okay, so, all the operations are in G of 2 to the m. Okay, it is important. If there exists roots, set them as. x 1 inverse 
x2 inverse so on till xw inverse. So, this in this step you find the error locations. Okay, and then you solve for the error magnitudes. Okay, find y one, y two through y w. Okay, so how do you find them? Have an equation. So, you have the van der Mond you have to do the inverse of the van der Mond matrix times ok. So, once again I am having to elongate the picture here. Okay, then what do you do? Are you done? Okay, so these are error magnitudes. Okay, so this basically defines your uh, error error polynomial. You have to take R of x all the way from here. What are these i j's? The x j equals alpha power i j. Okay, so this is quite important. So we find it. This gives you a c hat of x. Okay. Well, once you get s i s. Here, okay. Look up table for what? No, SI to a error vector in the system. Well, the numbers are going to be huge. Okay, so you are working with the Galois feed, let's say 2048, and T is 40 or 30 or something. So if you want to get the number of possible SIs itself is 2048 raised to the power 40. You cannot do lookup tables. See, if lookup tables are possible, even syndrome decoder can be implemented. Okay. Lookup tables are tough. Okay, so, the reason why I squeeze everything into these boxes is to give you the impression that this is a very small, simple decoder. Okay. <laughs> so, at least in uh, with this illusion, you might not be too scared of it. It is actually not very scary. Okay. Today, you can implement these decoders at several gigabits per second few gigabits per second, I mean not say several, one or maybe little bit more than one gigabit per second in actual whatever 45 nanometer technology and get it working. So, it is it's, it's a very well studied decoder, okay. All right. So, let us stop here, run out of time.